So, Dan, your listening choices for the year. Um, right, yes, okay, so this is not going to be in any kind of order because, you know. Don't need to worry about it. Oz is all over the place as well. So I'll, I'll start it towards the end and then just sort of figure it out. Um, so, Pierce and I both went to see Alcest and Mono. That was very good. It was indeed. Um, a lot of my brother's friends went as well and they would seem to be very surprised that double headliners were a thing mm-hmm. because they were just like hey I thought Alcest was headlining and I tried to explain it like four times but maybe it was just too loud I don't know <laughs> um, the band they had supporting them Sinistro Sinistro yeah they were very good as well I like the kind of Portuguese I remember correctly yes. yes yes I like the kind of theatricality the front woman had as well it was very effective yeah <laughs> there's one way of putting it yeah <laughs> they are worth they are worth checking out. I'm sure that they will go on to better things. Um, speaking of Alsace's album, I really like it. I'm not going to go too deep into it because we did an episode on it. Just I, there weren't anything I disliked on it. Um, mono were not what I was expecting, but that's only because I couldn't find any of their music online somehow. That's fair. I mean, I do have like most of their albums now. I've been looking into them for a while, so my friend recommended them a couple of years back. I think the only reason we were able to do the review is because Pierce gave me the album, so... Yeah, because I bought them, so... Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier on that I hadn't listened to the Charles Gambino album. I did so in the interval. Yeah. Ooh, how long was it? Who would, who, who's even going to know? Um, it's very good, I like it. It's It feels different from the last one, I think. Yeah. So, um, I actually paid for music as well this year. This has been a weird year. Where I've actually been active in doing things. I guess <laughs> it doesn't sound like it if you're, you know, actively a fan of music. But um, I bought some. I bought one of Pink Guy's albums. Oh no! Oh <laughs> yes. But I also bought a bunch of legit stuff like. Um, everything that Kawan, Kawan, I don't know how to pronounce that, has put out because I really like them. Um, <laughs> and I also bought uh, Escape Velocity by Dynatron, which was... Oh yeah, D- Dynatron is super good. Um, I have a ton of stuff on my uh, wish list that I'm probably never going to get around to, but hey, I really liked some stuff from Oceans of Slumber. Um, Let's see what else. Sylvain? Sylvain is something I mean to check out more as well. Mm, mm. I don't have much of their stuff, but it's pretty good from what I've heard. So. Um, there's a guy called Noel Rassen Grayson, which I I listened to in like January and completely forgot about, but he's all about, I think, playing, if I remember correctly, playing classical instruments out in the woods and capturing all the background noise as well and incorporating it. Huh. Oh, that's really Cool. I really think that. I think uh, one of Cold Luna's albums was done like that, which is really quite nice. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a more, not, not classical, more, you know, post metal. But... Um, I mean, there were other stuff as well, like um, there was Prog Noir by The Stickman, um, Elysium Pleasures by Carpet, um, Don't Piss on Me, I'm Already Dead by Crywank. What <laughs> 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 the fuck? Don't piss on me, I'm already dead. Wow! <laughs> um, and there was probably a ton of other stuff that I can't immediately place because I listened to it on YouTube or something and then forgot to bookmark it. Um, well, this means you're listening to a lot of stuff. Oh. Yeah, well, it's not like I never stopped listening to a lot of stuff, I just stopped paying attention to it. Mm. I think is what happened. Um... And yeah, like, again, things like Macro were significant, because that was a good show with the good music. Yeah. Good, good thing. <laughs> and if I go on any longer, I'm going to just start flailing even more, so it's probably about time. Um, oh god, spotlight now on me. Yeah, come on, Mr. Host. 
It's only your show. Um, alright. Um... Give me an example of someone listing too much stuff that their brain just implodes. Yeah, I mean, not going in any particular order, but I'll just pick out the music and albums I did actually keep a hold of. Um, more on that later. But um, I'm just going to go alphabetically. This is in no particular order, not even by when it came up in the year, but... Of course, there was Emma or Emma. I I'm never sure how to pronounce it's it. Emma. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what? Emma. What? Um. Oh, that was a frustrating listen for me because it was sort of like I had to give it exactly um two and a half out of five because I liked half the album. And what was most frustrating about it is. There were certain songs that I wanted to like more, but I just couldn't. It was like, I, I feel like I should like this more, but I'm just bored. Um, of course, there was Alcest, uh, which, as I said in the review, my how much I liked the album, in contrast to how good I thought it was on a technical level, is in stark contrast. And that still hasn't changed. Um, and Baby Metal, that was... Something. Yeah, that was one of those... Is this the same band I heard a few years ago? Because it doesn't feel like that. They do step the game up a lot. Yeah. Well, have, as I said earlier, having a consistent backing band helps a lot. Yeah. Because the fact that they didn't have a, from what I gather, they didn't have a consistent lineup until this time, until the second album. What the fuck? Well, at least for the live shows, they didn't. So yeah, if when you've got that sort of setup going on, it's going to be. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you say it's like like live shows. I'm not expecting to change from track to track on their first album, but I mean, it's more like you need time to build up a consistent relationship with people in order. To... That's how you get uh, collaboration and everything, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, also, listen through Childish Gambino. Uh, we were intending to do a proper review of that album, but everything happened at once. <laughs> but what I can say is definitely a fun album that every I think everyone should check out. It's quite definitely not a rap album this time which childish gambino is more well known for um it's got some jazz influences but i i would agree as dan was saying earlier um it's more funk based than jazz i should point out i was saying this off mic not you didn't miss anything mm. yes anyway yeah but yeah it's definitely worth checking out and um, It'd be interesting to see what critics have had to say about that album because I know they weren't a fan of Because the Internet. Um, just for a bit of context, the newest album is called Awaken My Love. So, quite a different... There's a much more standard album title compared to some. Yeah, uh, You've got Cult of Luna and Julie Christmas which well cult of luna is an exception to the rule when it comes to me and post metal and julie christmas just has an amazing voice she does and just the two together is sort of it's one of those oh my god this is so awesome oh my god oh my. <laughs> i reason to earlier and it's still just as bloody amazing as it was, wasn't it, first of it? So, yes. Um, have to go over this one. Black Star. That album. Oh, boy, that album. Um, <laughs> I cannot emphasise this enough. Listen to Black Star. Listen to it from beginning to end several times in a day. And then after that, listen to No Plan. Which was uh, released on his Vivo 
like a year afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's important to note that no plan was recorded along with everything else on Black Star, so... It does feel as if it should be. Yeah. It was intended by him to be released. It's not like a Jimi Hendrix situation where they found a bunch of scraps from him and decided to put it out. It was actually intended for release. So it's not going to sound subpar or anything like that. Um, Oh, Black Star is just... You've just got to listen to it because you can hear the weight of what David Bowie was going through at the time. And it's quite it's quite heart wrenching when you listen through it. Um as how good the album is, it does leave you at a bit of a loss for words. Uh I did actually put off listening through it until almost a year had passed since its release because I was sort of like, Oh, he's dead. There's not going to be any more. We'll save it all last bits. Yeah. Um on to more wait. Hmm? It was worth the wait, though. Yeah. <laughs> On to more positive notes, and we did do a review of this as well. It was, like, the only review we managed to do in September. Transcendence by Devin Townsend. Uh, now, this will probably surprise any long-time listeners, but it's not going to be album of the year for me. It's an amazing album, but here's the thing. I know Devin Townsend can do better. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly what happened last year with California for me. Yeah. But the difference is I've never had a Devon Townsend song that I've outright vehemently hated like you have with Califina. True that. The worst I've had is... Eh. <laughs> That's quite a stark contrast between that and... Uh, which song is it? Believe. Yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, you were you were practically gone out of your way to rant about how much you hate Believe. I mean, when it came to reviewing the album, I actually had to give you your own time to rant about it. I was going to say, it's a terrible song. Whereas for me, with Devin Townsend, this is the first time I've had an outright meh for him, and that's with Transdermal Celebration, which is a cover. So it's not even his own work the only that I'm, works. huh? Not even his only original work. Yeah, it's not even his stuff that I'm going meh about. It's Ween, who are a bit of a fifty-fifty band anyway. So, and I've listened to the original. It's one of those. There's only so much you can do with it. Um. I only listened to some of the songs off the new Dope album, so not really much to comment on that. Uh, Epica's new album, we did in the Clusterfuck review. Uh, Opinion stays the same. It's an amazing album that everyone should give a listen. Uh, Garbage, Strange Little Birds. We did do a review of that, but... I've taken it down for various reasons that I'm not going to go into, but suffice to say, if you do want to listen to that in all its crappy audio quality, because let's just say I had a lot of technical problems when editing that together, and so things went kind of... If you do want to listen to it, it is an entry-level download available on my Patreon, so have at it if you feel so inclined. But all I'll say is it's a worthwhile album to listen to, and Garbage is back on form with it. Hmm. Which is nice to see and hear. Yeah. Um, Ghost, again, we did in our Clusterfuck review... Uh, that was an amazing album. Go, support Blood Music. I'm not going to dis- disagree with that. Go on, go on, you want to. Yeah. Uh, non Paradisi. Go, go. Fly, my pretties. Um, Insomnium, I've 
listened through about half that album now. So I can say of what I've heard, yeah, go for it. Listen through it. Definitely listen through it, especially because like, all the final parts of it are some of the best parts as well. So. <laughs> Uh, Katie Tunstall again, Clusterfuck review, really good album more on the solid rock album side of things as opposed to a lot of her stuff which has been more pop oriented I'd say yeah I'd probably say that's about right um, I won't say the review was glowing but it was a positive review, I mean most of our reviews are positive with the very odd exception yeah, but Kitty Tunstall was a good album, and it's one of her best, I'd say, actually. Mm. So, and she's got a pretty solid discography as it is. Yeah. Uh, Lacuna Coil's latest album. Bit of a return to their, um, Comalies? Comalies? I'm never sure how to pronounce that. I think it's Comalies, I'm not sure. Uh, but sort of in that vein, with uh, odd new influences, like, um... One of their songs is practically a straight-up metalcore song, so it's sort of like, what? <laughs> when did metalcore when get on this? But yeah, um, speaking as someone who isn't that big on metalcore, it's actually a really good song, so... Uh, that one is... Delirium. I realise I should be saying the names of the various albums. Yeah, it might help, but... Uh, and... If people are really are interested in something, they can presumably look it up quite easily. Yeah. These are particularly obscure artists for the most part. So. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay Sterling. Uh, what a fantastic half album. Yeah. That's just so depressing. Um, half album or two thirds album? Yeah, two thirds or so, probably. Um, what's, eight, what's eight out of 14? Someone good with maths. Oh, no, you're out of luck. <laughs> uh, like 62% or something stupid like that? I don't know. Uh, something like that. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's why none of us went into careers involving maths. Can you imagine? Perhaps you'd all be working in the renewable energy industry or something. <laughs> I'm just imagining... I... Me somehow landing a job involving the Large Hadron Collider and I get s sort of like a decimal point wrong or something and they just come to me and go, Edmund, you somehow created a parallel universe where everyone is made of spaghetti. That shouldn't even be possible with this machine. <laughs> Um, the cosmic spaghetti fills you with determination. What? what there would just be fantastical racism against the spagolis, you know. <laughs> oh God! They're coming in here, taking our poor restaurants. <laughs> coming in, taking our cosmic into essence. But yeah, that. Yeah, ah, uh, it was such a frustrating sit through because it's all sort of like. I want to like this album more, but I can't because several of these songs SUCK! Thankfully, all of them are, you know, not Lindsay's own work. At least, entirely her own work. Yeah. I mean, ugh. Why get Rivers Cuomo? I, fucking Rivers Cuomo. I, I mean, have you listened to the last few Weezer albums? I haven't listened to any Weezer albums since I was like, 11, so... Uh, I've caught various songs because another reviewer did a retrospective on Weezer and it's sort of like... Okay. So their their quality is on an oscilloscope. Well, if you can win Doom on an oscilloscope, then presumably you can win Weezer too. <laughs> uh, um... Then again, though, people have run Doom in Minecraft, so... <laughs> this is true. Uh, Meatloaf, with um, Braver Than We Are. That's quite funny, really. Lindsay Sterling's album is Brave Enough, and Meatloaf's is Braver Than We Are. But yeah, that was a great album. 
one next, potentially brave at some point or something. Brave until further notice. New two of the bravest warriors confirmed. What? Well, it's only accessible on, on an app, so that's kind of pointless. <laughs> the salt is real. Um, <laughs> yeah. Music show, come on. Uh, but yeah, that was a great album. Again, covered in the clusterfuck review. Uh, yeah, you can see how much we were, how many albums came out in September and October that I keep going again. Clusterfuck review. Well, there's a lot of albums to say this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and... Oh, Megadeth. With Dystopia. I'll come back to that. In a little bit. Because... Do you, do you mean doing a disappointing album of the year, Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Okay, next, Meshuggah. Really good album. Again, clusterfuck yeah. review. Really good album if you can survive having your face melted twice at once. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say this much. If you want a chilled out album, do not go for Meshuggah! Um, yeah, The Violent Sleep of Reason. There is no sleeping with that album playing. It's pretty violent, though. Yeah. Oh god, the drums. <laughs> but yeah, again, clusterfuck review. Metallica, we reviewed Hardwired to Self Destruct. That I really enjoyed. I think I probably enjoyed it more than you did, Pierce. You did, I think, yeah. Yeah. We both it's enjoyed like, it, but. It's good, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd still stick with my original score of 4 out of 5. Um, if we're to do a sort of how that would be on a scale, if you consider, say, Saint Anger would be a naught out of five. Okay, no, correction, naught point five out of five, because there is, like, half a song on there that's decent. Half a song on there that's decent, and it's repeated twice on the same song. I wasn't even thinking of that. Um... <laughs> And I suppose, uh, what would be a five out of five Metallica album? Master of Puppets, probably. Yeah, I was going to say Master of Puppets. Possibly Ride the Lightning as well. Yeah. And I'd say Black Album would be four. So we're saying it's similar quality, at least for me, as Black Album. Yeah, I'll probably agree with that. Um... Next, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds with um, Skeleton it's Tree. Great, listen to it. Huh? It's fucking great, listen to it. Yeah. Again, clusterfuck <laughs> review. Um, don't listen to it if you're having a bad day. <laughs> Even a slightly bad day. You don't really want that. Yeah. It will make you sad. Uh, periphery. Um, I was it that album's growing in me, actually. Yeah? The more I listen to it, the more I like it. There's a couple of songs here and there, not too keen on, but most of it's been improving on me over time. Um. Well, I did check out Dragonite Alpha and Dragonite Omega this year as well, and yeah, they're really soft, pretty decent. So you can get them as a double pack for like eight quid. They're super cheap. Admittedly, I haven't listened to the album since we reviewed it. I should probably do that, but keeping track of everything is like ah. You got so much other stuff to listen to. Yeah, but yeah, it's still definitely worth a listen. Um, perturbator, or perturbator, yeah. or perturba perturbator. Pertur perturbator? Uh, I don't know, but Perculator? whatever. Um, Perculator? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the Uncanny Valley. Amazing album. If you can still get hold of the special edition, go buy that. I don't know if you can. Yeah. It was one of the... There were two six out of fives for me last year. Or this... Whatever. Last year. This part was past current year, yeah. yeah. Easy way to put it. There were two six out of fives for me in 2016. One was this. The other 
was Testament. So that gives you an idea of how in all the albums we did manage to cover, and there were only two that were six out of fives. So definitely get this album, get the special edition. You will not regret it. It You can get it on Blood Music, Blood Music's band camp for pay what you want. Um, if you can't get it in physical format, then definitely contribute to them because they put so much work into everything. They do. Everything looks stupid nice. It's run entirely by one dude who's a total boss. So. Mm. Um, uh, Taja's... Oh. Now this is where we get into a complicated matter because she released a preview album i i'm not sure i i'm confused um what a mysterious concept yeah there was the shadow self and the brightest void which do actually interlink with each other there's maybe one or two songs that are on both albums but um the rest are just all new material on both things. Uh, if you're a fan of symphonic metal, uh, I, I will... Admittedly, I say that, and I know Pierce is a fan of symphonic metal, but for whatever reason, he's not a fan of Tarja's voice, so go figure. But if you're a fan of Tarja and old... Nightwish and all that sort of thing, then definitely worth looking into both of those albums. Um, I basically haven't listened to Nightwish since she left, so... What a mysterious concept. Although I should probably look into their stuff now that Floor Jansen is fronting them instead of that shrieking, shrill annoyance of a woman. Floor Jansen's generally pretty good for my parts, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't even remember the, the name of the singer between Tasha and Floor. It's just, she was, in my opinion, god-awful. I don't remember it was either. I didn't really pay much attention to Nightwish in the first place. Do you know, not, you know, not particularly caring about Tasha. So. Well, it, it's one of those, why are you getting someone with such a weak voice to replace Tasha? Because say what you like about Tasha, you could never say she had a weak voice. She didn't, yeah. You're getting what amounts to someone with a pop music voice to replace a soprano. A mezzo-soprano, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think it might be, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Definitely have a look into both uh, Shadow Self and uh, The Brightest Void. Next, there's uh, Tech Nine with The Storm. We did a review on that. Uh, check it out if if you want a more in-depth uh, analysis than just it's a really good album. You should definitely check it out. Um, score still stays the same and opinion stays the same that the second half is stronger than the first half. It is, yes. Um, Testament, Brotherhood of the Snake... Admittedly, part of the reason it was a 6 out of 5 for me is because I'd been waiting for so long for a really good thrash album. And I'm a big thrash fan. It was the first type of metal I'd ever listened to. And I grew up on thrash. I grew up on Metallica, Megadeth, all that sort of thing. So to finally get a really good thrash album... I think that's why I really enjoyed Hardwired to Self-Destruct as well, because it was sort of like, oh my god, two really good thrash albums in the same year. I'm telling you, actually doing something that wasn't terrible for once. Hmm. Which is not necessarily what you just spoke. Yeah. Well, considering Death Magnetic was mediocre, Lulu was PAIN! If you haven't listened to Lula, Lulu, don't. <laughs> I haven't, and I don't intend to. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll say Listen to it once and then burn your computer Because it's been infected Deleting it will not rectify the matter uh, 
But yeah, Testament in the Clusterfuck Review. Uh, Tommy86, Clusterfuck Review. Uh, again, Blood Music. I sent the wave again. Yeah, uh, Transhumanism. Again, Pay What You Want. Great album. I think I must have given it a 4 out of 5. Uh, I think it might be a 4 out of 5 or 4.5, I can't remember which. Ed, you sound a little bit like a guy who's just listing things up at an auction. <laughs> Well, yeah, I've, I've yeah. got a lot of albums to go through. Yeah, yeah. Desperately trying not to raise our hands because we might buy something. Yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> um, War Paint. Uh, again, Clusterfuck Review. Really fun album. Not what I was expecting from a band called War Paint. I was. Ex- <laughs> I was expecting a much more um, violent sounding album. Um, that one's called uh, Heads Up. Vintage is currently selling at £500,000. £500,000 any takers. £500,000 for the vinyl that was only released to 500 people and everyone bought to skull. People that do that, fuck you. <laughs> hey, it's not, at least it's not Wu Tang fan. Oh, God. Shrekali? Where's my Bill Murray film? Huh? Didn't he stream a bunch of stuff on Twitch and just have it in the background? I think he might have done. I think that I think did happen. Yeah, least, didn't he like, lose a bet or something and agreed to actually stream it? Possibly. Awesome. Then again, though, he did get pelted with shit, I think, so if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I think it has been streamed at least once now. Uh, let me just check that. Um... Ah, Martin Shkreli streams Wu-Tang Clan album after Trump victory. So he did, yeah. Mm. It's still not going to make him any less of an asshole, but it's good for something. Mm. Um, That's pretty much it for albums I listened to either last year or just before doing the um, year-end wrap-up. Um, I listened to some of... Uh, oh... One of the J-pop or J-rock albums. That doesn't narrow it down much. Scandal? Uh, no. Samira Uesaka? That's the one. I have the pleasure then. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Which did I listen to right the second? I listened to some of that. And it's one of those cases of I would be... I would have finished that album if I hadn't run out of time before doing the recordings and whatnot. <laughs> Well, honestly, it was not expecting you to like that at all. But you seem to have a relatively positive opinion of it. Yeah. Well, that's that's why you keep me around because I always keep you guessing. <laughs> um, that's just going over the albums listened to last year. I've probably forgotten stuff. Um, the only other thing that I can really bring to mind that I started listening to. Um, this isn't a uh, specific album but an artist in general uh steam powered giraffe i know of them never actually listened to stuff though. i basically started li- oh wait there's a couple of other bands that i discovered um i'll go into them in a moment but um i basically discovered them whilst watching um radio dead airs monday show no one through a friend yeah but well they're a steampunk band which do they play punk? That's the question. Oh, now I know who you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, I discovered them through a cover of "Better, Faster, Harder, Stronger." I always get that title wrong. Uh, yeah, harder, better, faster, harder, better, stronger. Better, better, stronger. Yeah, I always get the words the wrong order. Harder, harder better, faster, stronger. stronger. Ex- Expialidocious. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way, the way when you say it really fast, it blends together into one word. Now that now that's a mashup. I think we need to hear. Yeah. And then he was Oh, God, that was such trash. I, I can't even. Well, it was it was it was so lazy because it was it wasn't like he even changed anything in the song. He just rapped over it. There was no. It was artistically bankrupt. What's this? This is Kanye West. We're talking about. Kanye West did a cover of Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, but it wasn't really a cover because it was just, well, it was a li- cover in the most literal sense in that it was him covering up the original version with, by rapping over it. That's all it was. Then again, though, this is Kanye, please buy the game to send my mother to heaven, West, so... <laughs> I think the way 
endless runner. <laughs> endless runner is one of the most devoid intellect-based genres of games. Hey, um, another band that I discovered last year, Contrast, spelled K-O-N-T-R-U-S-T. Have any ever heard about them through you, so I can't help it. They are a weird band. Um, I found out about them because I was going through Ailstorm videos, and they're on the same label, Napalm Records. Uh, I was attracted by the weirdness of one of their videos, uh, Sock and Doll. Now here's the thing, they've got this gimmick of dressing in lederhosen and all that sort of thing, and for the video, they had their band mocked up in sock puppet form. Sure, that sounds amazing. And I actually intend on making those sock puppets, the sock puppets of the front man and front woman. Uh, they are... How to describe them? It's... Take a bit of disco, a bit of funk, a bit of metal. Yeah, add some chemical X. These are the ingredients that create them. <laughs> uh, and a bit of rap. And then you add Chemical X. <laughs> chemical X being Lederhosen. <laughs> chemical L. And then you get Contrast. It's just this amazing blending of genres that... Yeah, definitely check them out. Uh, as I say, Sock and Doll... Well, I'll put it as simply as this. Now, the guy who presents Radio Dead Air uh, has a weekly show called What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And this is discussing the weirdest stories that come out during the week. So he's seen some shit, and it weirded him out. He just went, so yeah, that was weird. Well, that was a thing. <laughs> um... That's it for what I can bring to mind of things I really got into last year, aside from new albums and all that sort of thing. 